How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching this video and just a quick note if you guys are subscribed or if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe and when you do click this little bell here on my channel and get all notifications sent to you from my channel that way you guys can be updated with all of my channel updates and uploads and whatever else I do on here. Thanks for watching. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the source code. My name is Deshaun and today we are going to be creating a re we are going to be recreating a high pixels TNT run or sorry not TNT run TNT tag and I just want to go over a quick uh, couple things it's not going to be quite exact um, it may not be perfect uh, but we're going to make it as close as possible so I've already done a few things I've already set up a new plugin called TNT run and then I've also done a plugin plan and now just a reminder um, actually all the code will not be available till the end of this tutorial so you actually have to follow along in this tutorial and then when the tutorial is over uh, you'll get to see some of the code or you will have access to the code on github um, just just to give you a uh, heads up or maybe at the end of each each video I'll do it but it's, it's kind of hard because I record these in such long sessions uh, so it might just be easier to just do it in um, one chunk so so the first thing that we have to do is we have to not TNT run not TNT tag and all of this is set up to be TNT run because I'm an idiot. So I've already gone ahead and done a few things, right? So I have our features that we are going to need. We're going to need a system that recognizes the TN the actual tag and when a player has the TNT on their head. We're going to need a countdown. We're going to do it a better way. We're going to use system dot current uh, current time or current milliseconds. Then we're gonna, we need a scoreboard system, uh, which I don't have it up anymore. Um, but we need a scoreboard system that has a countdown on it. And um, sort of how many players are left, time remaining, um, your coins, uh, and then rewards, which are the coins that I was just talking about. So we will just call this coins. And then we will just do dash rewards. And we want the ghost effect. So what happens after they die? So spectator mode. This is what I couldn't figure out earlier. I couldn't figure out what it was called, spectator mode. And we also want a player manager and a game manager. So we'll go ahead and save this. And I've already created a couple classes here, uh, just an events class and a main class. Uh, so let's go ahead and create our player manager. And so we are going to put it in a new package and we will call this player data package. And this is going to be player manager, just in case uh, we want to eventually do something else, right? So maybe we should put in high. Uh, just in case you want to do more with the player data, such as you want maybe a MySQL uh, setup, well, a MySQL um, class that, you know, fetches and gets all of your player data. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and implement listener, uh, just in case. Don't totally know if I'm going to end up needing it, but we'll just go ahead and implement it anyways. So now we need to set up some private variables that will represent this player, right? So we need a private UUID, UUID, and then uh, we want a private Boolean in game. Um, and if you don't know why we're doing these, they're pretty obvious, and I'll explain uh, at the end here. And then we want private int coins, and then private, actually, we should go ahead and say coins earned. And then we want private Boolean is dead. And so now we have these particular variables because we need their UUID. You don't want to use their player name or even their just the player variable because it's not good. And UUID is very specific to a single player. There's no other Minecraft player that has their UUID. And your UUID would never change. So if they change their username, their UUID stays the same. We want the in-game Boolean because we want to know if the player's in the game. Because if they are, we want to restrict them to maybe certain commands or certain chats and if they're in game we don't want them to be able to join another game and when they leave the game or the game ends we want the system and our whole server to know that that player is no longer in a game and then we want coins earned because we want how many coins earned during that match um, we're going to do so if whoever you know as the more you move on through the match you get coins per you know minute or every 30 seconds that a bomb goes off you live you get x number of coins per 30 seconds or whatever and then we want is dead because we want to know if they're dead and if they are, we want to put them in spectator mode and we want them to not be able to do anything besides watch 
Um, that and we can also make it so if they leave, uh, they won't get punished uh, for leaving. Um, we can you can set up a, a way to make it so uh, if a player does leave the game, you can set up a sort of punishment system. But what we need to go ahead and do is we need to set we need to set these right. So we need player manager, and we need a UUID UUID, and then we need a a boolean which is end game, and then we need an int which is coins earned and then we need a, another boolean which is is dead and then we'll go down here and we'll say this dot uuid equals uuid this dot in game equals in game and this dot coins earned equals coins earned and then this dot is dead equals is dead and now what this allows us to do is this allows us to have one class um, that can keep track of all the stuff instead of having it in a config and whatnot, which we will put in a config uh, for storing, um, but it keeps track of it during well, while the server is running, so that way we don't have to keep referring back to the config. Uh, we can just keep it all in this one class, and then if that player leaves the server, we can dump all that into the config, or if the game ends, we can just dump it into the config, uh, like I said, rather than constantly doing it. And then we need to create getters and setters for these so we can get and set all these values later on. And this is the only thing we're going to be going over in this video. We're just going to be working on the player manager. And what did I just do? Oh, I just I did the fix, but that's not fixing it, actually. And then we want this last one here. Create getter and setter. <clears throat> all right. So now we want to create something for when the player um, actually joins the server right so we're just going to go ahead here and we're going to create a public array list because we need an array list of all the players inside of the player manager right so we will just say player manager equals new array list of player manager and now you can do a hash map um, all depends on how you really want to do it uh, I like using array lists because um, it really is just sort of a a, a list of players and uh, what we can do for instance we can go ahead in here and we can say uh, player manager dot add uh, actually let's just do this on um, in our events class here so let's just create a new uh, private main class equals or main class plugin equals main class dot get plugin main class dot class and now we can get access to our main class and we just want to go ahead and say plugin dot or you know let's just make this really well we'll keep it as plugin uh, we'll say plugin dot player manager array list dot add so when the player joins the server we are going to add them to this new um, player managers class right uh, really, we're going to do it uh, when the player joins the game. We're going to do this player manager class because this player manager is really only for when they're actually in the game. When they're outside the game, it doesn't really do that much. But for now, just for purposes so you can see how it's done, we're going to do it inside of our player join. So when they join the server, they get added to this player manager. Well, actually, you know, that, that's fine. We can actually do it inside this uh, player manager here because we can do the end game and we can set that to false. So it, it is actually good. So let's just create a player player equals event dot get player. And we'll go ahead and do that, import that. And we want the UUID, UUID equals player dot get unique ID. We'll go ahead and import that. And we'll just get rid of that gap there. And now we want to go ahead and say new player manager. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a new player inside of our player manager here and we can see the UID is there and what is oh so we got to change the visibility to public whoops so we want public player manager there we go and so now what's gonna happen here is you can see that when we did this we went ahead and added a new we went we added a new player to the player managers array list which is perfect and so now for say for some reason we wanted to go ahead and you know we'll just say public void get players we wanted to see who's all in the player managers class 
we can say for and I gotta remember this. Um, like I said, I'm doing this off out of a whim here. So we want to go ahead and say for plugin dot player manager dot so for player play. We'll just do this because it'll correct it for us. So yeah, there we go. So for player manager, and then we'll just say p man. We can go ahead and do p man dot, and now we can get all of these things, but we can also set them, right? So we can say, get UUID, or we can go ahead and say, pman.getCoinsEarned. So we can do all these things now with our player managers class. And now, like I said, you can do this with a hash map. Um, you can set the hash map as their UID and then the player manager. Um, but I think an array list is just as good and it gets it, gets it done. So that is all I got for you guys today in this video. Uh, we created our player managers class. In next episode, we will actually create our game manager where we will learn about um, creating lobbies and, well, lobby spawns and, you know, spawn points and, you know, the uh, actual um, arenas is what most people refer to them as. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And yeah, so what I'll actually do, if you guys didn't notice in the first episode, I'm actually just going to dump this whole project inside of uh, GitHub, and then you guys will have access to everything that we did in this video, so, uh, so you guys don't have to worry about it waiting till the very end, because this is going to probably be a very, very long uh, tutorial session, or tutorial series here, while we recreate TNT Tech. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.